must have been just before the uh, uh, pandemic, but she had a, a story every day about different black people from Monroe County. Yeah. And, and I thought, this is fascinating. I, there are people, I, I was ashamed that there were people that came out of Monroe County and did that all this stuff. I didn't know. Yeah. No, that's important to, to have that. And my mother wrote for the, the Monroe Evening News, and then when she stopped, it didn't continue. No, no, nobody picked it up. And nobody picked, nobody it, picked up, it up. So then I picked it up for two years. I did two years. Oh, you did? Yeah. You know, and, and this year, now I've moved to California for four years, so right, I didn't right. do it while I was there. But now that I'm back, I'm like, hmm, maybe. But that's something else we have in common. We both left for four years and we came back to this town. Because I was in Florida. No place like Monroe. That's true. It's so true, right? That's true. Even going to the, some of the best places in America, like Florida or California, where everybody seems to flock to, oh, yeah. you still ended up back here in Monroe. Here I am. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I like like the show will break halfway through. Okay. Uh, and I just throw it out for a commercial, but we can start immediately. And a lot of times I'll do that if we're really on a cool topic. So. All right. And the, the, the uh, title of your album is The Picture of Dorian Gray 2. That's correct. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Ready? Mm hmm Hi, everybody, and welcome to Bobbing Around Monroe. Our weekly show is a lively look at lives and times of people in Monroe County. And I'm your host, Bob Vergeels. And Bobbing Around Monroe is brought to you by Jones for Men in downtown Monroe. And today, we have a man who actually proves the theory that mus real musicians have day jobs. Dorian Gray, you're you're with us again. This is uh, uh, you were with us a couple of years ago, but now you're here as a solo. Uh, we're we brought you in because you make music, but you also have a job, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me, Bob. It's a blessing. It's, a, it's always good to see you. Always good to see you. Talk, let, let's talk about your album first. Okay. It's it's called the, the Picture of Dorian Gray Two. Yes, sir. This is the sequel to my first ever album, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Um, not just because I wanted to make an autobiography type of album, but because of a famous book by Oscar Wilde, The Picture of Dorian Gray. So this is a this was a book, uh, just a very brief summary because we could go down a long rabbit hole about that. But that book was about someone that um, was so into his own looks and riches and reputation that he decided to sell his soul so that he could stay young forever. Mm -hmm. So that story inspired me, being that I'm a man of faith, to create my own album, except show a different perspective if Dorian Gray was to not sell his soul. So that's where we let me Gotcha, off. okay. And so how many songs are on the album? So the picture of Dorian Gray 2 actually has 30 songs on 30 it. 30 songs? But some of them aren't songs, they are just skits or okay. quick, like, uh, Snippets, mm -hmm. but yeah, third songs. All written by Dorian Mandela Gray, I would imagine, right? All written by Dorian Mandela Gray. No ghost writers except me and the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Inspiration so how, by God. How, how would you describe the songs that are on the album? Uh, my music is definitely autobiographical. Mm -hmm. um, it tells about my life. It tells about what I've been through. Uh, some of the things that we all go through and we can relate to what we all found on the album But it also talks about some of the struggles that I can admit that I've been through. It's a very transparent album So it just tells you some of the struggles that we face here today um, On earth and how I got through them and how I would recommend that some of our young people that are facing some of the same problems should go through Is it difficult to talk about problems that you might have had in your life? Is it difficult? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sometimes you talk about topics that um, are traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you speak about topics that are about heartbreak and you may not want to talk about it, but for me, music is therapeutic. I don't see a therapist as I should um, and as most people should. So what I do is I go into a studio and I talk about and vent about my life's trauma or struggles or trials and tribulations and how I got through them and hopefully it helps somebody else and you have your own studio in your house I do have my own studio in my house which is why my business is called dream team home studios gotcha do you bring in other artists too to record 
I bring in other artists. I bring in um, sometimes just uh, musicians, such as like pianists and guitarists, um, all different types of creatives I bring into my house to work with me. How big is the studio? Uh, it's just like a normal office space in, in a home, kind of similar to this space that we're in piano, right now. That's, that's a pretty good size. Yeah, it's a full, I have a full-on piano, a Detroit Sterling piano in my house. So yeah, that does take up quite a bit of the studio. But yeah, wow, it's right wow. around the same size. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, wow. I, I didn't know, how, how long have you had this studio? Uh, actually, I just recently moved into and purchased this studio. Okay. I, I had been constructing, constructing my studio for around a year. It's finally ready. Because I looked into putting together my own studio, but not for music, because I had a chance to uh, uh, do voice work. And, you have a uh, great voice, Bob. <laughs> well, it, I, I, I use it to hide my face. Oh, stop. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm looking right at you. <laughs> Dorian Gray is our guest today. And tell people, if they want to get a, a copy of your, uh, of your uh, second album, how do they do it? If you would like to get a copy of my new album, The Picture of Dorian Gray, it's two, by the way. It's out now on all platforms. So Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to music, you can find my albums, The Picture of Dorian Gray 1 or 2. And do they have a picture of Dorian Gray on those, uh, on those albums? <laughs> right there on the cover, you can find the picture of Dorian Gray, one, the, the version of me um, that you see today, and then also the painting that, you know, doesn't age. So you can see both of those. Well, you have an age. I, I remember seeing you, <laughs> you know, you're, you're a little bit bigger than the first time I met you years ago, but you don't age either. You know, Bob, I don't want to, I don't want you to leak my secret here on the radio. No, no, no. Because no. I didn't sell my soul, but how am I not aging? <laughs> Who knows? Well, you're, you're lucky. You're lucky. Some, <laughs> some people are lucky. People don't guess me at my age, so it must be, must be being from Monroe. Yeah, there's no place like Monroe. That's what made you and I come back, Bob. That was my next question. Uh, because a lot of people might remember when we had you on what, quite some time ago, you talked about being in California and, and coming back. Uh, you know what? Save that thought. We, we've got to take a quick break. But I want to ask you about what brought you back and what you see in Monroe that you really want to be part of. But we'll be, we'll be right back to talk to Dorian Gray after we hear these words from Jones for Men. What's that? We're back today. Dorian Gray is our guest today. And he is one who went to California. Wow, that's where everybody likes to go. But he came back to Monroe. Let's ask him why. All right, Bob. Great question. So um, when it comes to Monroe, I don't think there's any place in the world like it. Moving out to California, even being only an hour away from Hollywood, I noticed that there's no place like Moreau. We have a lot of creatives, we have a lot of talent, and we are a melting pot, seeing as we're right in between Ohio and the rest of Upper Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I definitely believe that we're a very unique place. And on top of that, the reason that I came back personally is because it was time for me to start buying some real estate. My father is a landlord here in Monroe. He owns multiple properties and helps families who need a place to stay. And I also want to make a positive impact on the community. So I needed to start buying real estate and expanding my real estate portfolio. And I didn't have any place. I didn't own any homes. So when I went to start searching for my first home when I was in California, as many people may know, Home prices in California are maybe two, three, four times higher than they are here. I knew, I knew they were higher. I just didn't know what the uh, multiplier was. That's correct. Yeah. So when I saw those prices, it prompted me to look back home. And I looked home and saw that home prices were a lot more affordable. And then when I looked into moving, because I also wanted to make a difference at my church, mm -hmm. my local church. You go to Second Baptist? I do go to Second Missionary Baptist yeah. Church in Monroe. Um, I was very active in the church out in California, 
And making a difference there made me feel a little bit guilty for not still helping out at my home church. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take my talent and what I had learned out in California and apply it back in Monroe. So that's what prompted me to move back here and get involved in purchase banking and buying land here in Monroe. Do you, uh, do you have a, a bunch of houses that you rent to, like your father? I have one home that I own. I do not rent it out. This is just my, my primary mm -hmm. residence, but my goal is to buy a second home, rental property, get involved with buying multiple properties as well. But right now I'm in the stage where I'm just learning from the wisdom of my father. Sure. And you have a very, very close-knit family. Uh, with your, your dad and your mom, I know they have been pillars in the community for a long time. Your sister, when she went to Monroe High School, was an honor student. Um, you've the, the Gray family has really made uh, an impression on the community of Monroe. Thank you for that, Bob. I actually am wearing my sister Deanna Gray's clothing line right now, our family clothing line, Greatness Revolves Around You. She has a clothing line? She has her own clothing line. Well, here's another show. Yeah, exactly. So I, I can set this one up. This is an alley-oop to you, Bob, uh, <laughs> to get my sister Deanna Gray because she is the brains behind the Greatness Revolves Around You brand. And you can go to her website, www.greatnessrevolvesaroundyou.com, and you can get actually one of these sweatsuits that I'm wearing right now that is so warm and comfortable in the winter seasons because we know only in Monroe will you find seasons like Monroe. There's <laughs> oh, yeah. Snow at any you, you can have summer one day and you're shoveling <laughs> snow the next, yeah. Exactly. So the, these outfits are, are comfortable for all. all Where's seasons. she based out of? Where's Deanna? Based so she, she was actually based out of California, but. I believe she's considering making a permanent move back here to Michigan, so maybe that's something you can talk to her more oh. about on your your episode with her. I'll be darned. Well, I, I know we've had uh, a couple of clothing makers from the Grove who have been on the show, yeah. and uh, it's it, I tell you what, when I see young people have a dream and then they reach out and they go for it with everything they got, what a what a great thing that is. And and in Monroe, you get to recognize who they are. That's true. And Bob, I appreciate that you do that, that you're supporting and giving a platform for young creatives um, that are going after their dreams. And that's something that my company is big on as well, Dream Team Home Studios. That's what we're all about. If you have a dream, I don't want you to just dream it while you're sleeping. I want you to wake up and go after it and help give you the resources to make that happen. And that's what my company does, whether it be creating a commercial for your small business or big business, whether it be creating um, interviews and uh, getting those virtually online where you have onboarding information online. We help out companies, but we also just help out uh, young creatives like myself who may be pursuing music and need a music video um, or a photo shoot. These are things that my company helps out with. So I want to do what you're doing, Bob, and get more involved in Monroe um, throughout Michigan and throughout the United States with helping young creatives to make their dreams a reality. And there's a lot of them here. A lot of time. I, I, you talk about Second Missionary Baptist Church. I would bet that if you're looking for singers, you only have to look one, one or two pews away, my friend. I, I, I've heard the music coming out of that church. That's so true. Um, music, the food, the, definitely a ton of good cooks there at Second Missionary Baptist Church as well. And a hundred hundredth anniversary this year. Ooh, one hundred years. Um, I believe that it's been stated and it's confirmed. Second Missionary Baptist Church is the longest standing black church in Monroe history, 100 years. And I'm actually uh, the media manager. I, I serve on the media team there at Second Baptist, and I'm the one who helps stream the YouTube uh, yeah. so you can watch it virtually online on YouTube and I help with the Facebook. So I love Second Missionary Baptist Church. That's actually one of the main reasons I came back to Monroe as well is because I felt called to serve on board the, the staff there at Second Commission. Well, and I know your family is is active. I, I know your mom and, and your aunt Catherine James uh, very active. So yeah, uh, yeah. My my mother is on the usher board over the usher board there at Second Baptist, and my aunt Kathy, my aunt Kathy is actually uh, the treasurer there, um, or. Believe secretary, secretary there at Second Missionary Baptist Church, but she really does everything. That's why it's hard to, to put one title. Yeah, on oh her. yeah, exactly. <laughs> she does well, everything, and, and she has to keep Jolanda in line too. So that's got to be a, a full-time job too. Full-time job there. You can't keep that voice 
maintained though because she sings at second, but then she gets asked to sing around the community. I, as well. I've had her sing national anthems at some of my sporting events. She's amazing. Her voice is Dorian amazing. I actually have really her on my album, album, actually. The picture of Dorian Gray, too. She's on one of the songs on my album called The Bachelor. And I think, aren't her kids on your first album? Her kids are not on my album, but, but I, you produce them. I that's produced right. their yeah. first song. Yeah, that's right. I, I knew it was something like that. I knew it was something like that. Bob, I see you pushing to get them on my next album. I see what you're doing here. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll get a finder, Steve. What do you think? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, always looking for that next opportunity. <laughs> You're a smart man, Bob. One one last question. If you had to sell Monroe to somebody to come here, as one who's come back, what would you tell them? Wow. I would tell them that there's no place like Monroe. Where else did Eminem come to do an interview? He could have went anywhere else in the world. He decided to come to Monroe to do an interview with Stephen Colbert. Why would Stephen Colbert come to Monroe? Because it's the best place in America and in the world. Um, where are all of the most talented people, Monroe? Where are the melt? Where's the melting pot of all different different ethnic groups? And where do you see young business owners working with experienced business owners, all working together to create a fun experience for everybody? Only in Monroe. And as we're sitting here in the studio, I can look out the window and see there's a business that's run by a veteran person right next to a, a business that's run by someone in their twenties. And then next to that, there's a, another veteran business person and, and then another 30-year-old in the next next storefront. But Dorian Gray, thank you very much. The uh, title of the album is The Picture of Dorian Gray 2. Yes, sir. And it's available on all of the uh, different uh, places, that uh, platforms that you had mentioned. Always great to see you. Bob, make make sure you tell your mom and dad I said hi. I will, Bob. Can I have 30 seconds? Of oh, your time. Please, please go quickly. Thank you. 30 seconds of your time. They're, they're waving the time thing at me. All right. So, Bob, all I wanted to say with this last 30 seconds is I want to help build up all of these young creatives and teach them how to buy back their own land, teach them how to shoot their own videos, and teach them how to accomplish their dreams. Contact me, dreamteamhomestudios.com. Dorian, thank you very much for being with us. And we'd like to thank you for joining us today, too, for bobbing around Monroe. A service of Monroe County Radio sponsored by Jones for Men in downtown Monroe. Now, we'll be back next week and we'll be joined by another interesting guest when, once again, we go bobbing around Monroe. Yes, sir. <laughs> you it's, man, Bob. It's, it's just so natural when you and I talk. It's, oh, it's just, man. It really is. There's no way like, we can be contained to a 15 minute slot, Bob. Yeah, I know.